so here we are at the texture stage. Uh, I lost most of this, as I said before, so sorry for that. Uh, here I'm just starting with a base texture, which is a photo I got from some texture site. Uh, just a general rock thing. I'm, I'm not going to keep most of this. Well, I'm going to keep it, but I'm not. I'm going to change a lot of it. Uh, unfortunately, you will not see most of it, but, you know, or whatever. I'm overlaying some other textures here. Um, more brown ones get some uh, more lo uh, draw warm colors in there. And erasing some parts to make it fit, and uh, putting it overlay, and doing some level adjustments. Just make it a bit darker here, and um, obviously it's it has too many highlights right now. I'm going to fix that later on. Here, here's the ambient um, occlusion map. Map I also baked out from X Normal, brilliant software for baking out and um, AO maps. Overlaying it so that we just have some basic. Um, Texture down and uh, some basic de depth down, and here I'm going in with the dodge tool on a duplicate layer on the original texture, and uh, lightening up some edges. I realize I should probably have done this with a white brush, soft white brush, but it just I it didn't come to me, and uh, for whatever reason I used this, which will bring me some issues later on, but that's for later on. So here I'm just going in. Uh, highlighting edges does help a lot for rocks. It does give it that sharp feeling. However, I think it'll, I highlighted things a bit much here, obviously, seeing as I will back it off later on. Uh, and most of these highlights are actually going in the spectrum map, not the diffuse. Uh, but it's good to have some uh, detail in the diffuse, uh, just to, you know, keep it... I'm overlaying the... Um, not overlaying, I'm... Just putting it over the normal map on the low, low opacity so that you can see where the hard edges are, and um, in that, like that, just follow them with the dodge tool so that I can keep them hard. Because when you put a texture on, a lot of the hardness disappears. Uh, the normal detail, not everything is shown anymore, and you'll have to deal with that on your own. As pathetically hard as it might be. And basically, this is what I had time to record, uh, me doing these highlights, and I think I accidentally pressed pause on my recorder, and I forgot to resume it, um, until I was done, when I realized I had done it. So, sorry for that, I'm, I, I'm really sorry. So, what I'm really get, regretting is not showing you how I do the spectrum map, even though it's basically the way everyone else probably does it. I take the entire, all the layers, put them in a group, duplicate that group, um, name it specular, uh, do some layer adjustments, some curves, some, you know, hue saturation, and compressed uh, adjustments, just to make it darker so that I can uh, have some of those highlights that are still not. And um, then going in, I'm generally over a layer, over everything, and just paying in some blacks, uh, just where I'm sure I don't want any specular detail. And uh, I might also enhance some layers like the um, highlights here. Uh, the highlights actually barely touched because I want them to be the same and um, be pretty short. So I've probably done one side now. Uh, you should treat yourself as you were lucky because this is not fun to watch in real time. I almost thought of making real time seeing as the amount I lost was a lot, uh, but not a lot technically, but a lot, a lot of time. Uh, spent because I'm, I'm a slow texture, even for something simple like this, I'm pretty slow. Um, but yeah, I thought just watching this in real time, it's a pain in the ass. This is sped up quite a few times, I can't remember. Well, actually, my software uses a slider, so I don't actually know how many times it speeds up. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, again, just going in. I'm doing these highlights very hard, I'm realizing that. Um, yeah, it, it's just this so that I can see what I'm doing through the normal map. I will obviously back it off later. And, um, yeah, I think um, I'm not doing anything very interesting right now. And I know there are better ways to do this. I realized that, but I didn't do it a better way. So, hmm, move with it. The main issue I had with the dodge tool was that I was trying to blur it later on. I wanted to blur the layer with the highlights on just to give it a more soft look. And then I realized I had used the, the dodge tool so that I couldn't do that. Because it would dodge the entire texture. Uh, you know, so I had some issues with that. I think it's in the recording actually, I'm not sure. Uh, probably isn't, just with my luck. So let's see here, yeah, just highlighting edges. It is fun. Well, fun, fun. I mean, it's not hard. It takes some time. 
everyone should be able to do this. And yes, I use a tablet for my texturing and sculpting. It's a Wacom tablet because I, I find Wacom way superior. Um, it is a pretty, you know, standard sucky one on all what's up here. It's, it's just a bamboo fun or whatever they call it, the A5 size. I'm probably going to be upgrading that very soon to a um, another one, which is more, uh, which helps me more because this one is, I'm feeling the limitations of it, especially since I'm running multiple monitors, more than two, so um, A5 size, it isn't quite enough for me. Um, so here I'm backing off the layer a little bit, not too much yet, I'm doing all of that later on. Here I'm uh, duplicating the AO map, just so, that I can, so, just so that I can spot some errors on it, so I found one right there, which I'm not even sure if I bought the fix. I think, here, what I'm seeing out like this, this is just me trying it out in Maya, and um, which is on my other monitor, so you won't be able to see that. I'm not entirely sure though if I remove the, that artifact right there. It's sort of bug bugging me right now, but guess not. So let's see here. I'm still checking in my which you should always do. You should always check your texture in the 3D uh, viewport. Because you know, uh, players, gamers will see your assets through a viewport, they won't see it fully rendered. Uh, they will see it in a real-time 3D environment, so how it looks in the viewport is sometimes more important than how it looks, you know, just standard. Here you know, I'm again trying some overlay layers to see if I can somehow blur it, and it doesn't really quite work for me, so... Yeah. Here I'm going in with the uh, with a green color and playing with some um, sort of moss-like colors in between the cracks here, um, which sort of gives it a nice touch. I generally tend to overdo this too much and make my rocks extremely green, but for this I actually didn't do that. Uh, I, well, right now I'm doing it, uh, but I will be backing off this again later on. But that's sort of how I take some rocks. I do everything overly extreme and then I back it off. So we're closing up to the end of this video, actually. Unfortunately, I'll just be um, making some weird adjustments to the green layer. I'm trying some weird curves on, a, on an adjustment layer, if you don't know how what they are, you should definitely learn. Here I'm trying out, I did that, which just looks awful, I know, but I tried it out and I didn't like it, so I removed it. And, um, yeah, here's the stem texture, and, um, yeah, trying to add in some more cold colors like blue, which I then realized I could do with lights, so, yeah, that's pretty much the video, and, um, I wish I could do more, but next comes the um, hot red show you how it looks, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that.